thanks uh, to all of the witnesses for being here. Congratulations on your nominations. Ms. Ahuja, if I could just start with you. Last September, it was reported that employees in the executive branch were required to attend workplace diversity trainings in which they were told that, I'm quoting now, virtually all white people contribute to racism, end quote, and were required, were required to say that they, quote, they benefit from racism, they the employees, end quote, along with other ideas that, frankly, I think are, are deeply divisive, uh, amount to left-wing indoctrination, and really are attempts to divide the American people, in this case, federal employees, along the lines of race. I bring this up because you have experienced at OPM from 2015 to 2017, I believe. Uh, were you involved in any capacity or in creating or organizing these particular trainings, do you recall? Uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, no, I wasn't involved in those trainings, but I've, um, I'm aware, you know, in my, my current organization, and we work with a lot of members uh, in the Northwest, that a lot of companies are using diversity inclusion trainings. Um, they find it as um, an important resource to create a supportive and inclusive environment and really help them have a competitive advantage of, of really understanding people from all walks of life. So not particular to OPM, but certainly I've seen it more broadly uh, being used in this country more and more. And, and do you support it? I mean, the, the, the last administration uh, ceased diversity training that contained any elements of what is sometimes called critical race theory. Do you agree with that decision by the prior administration or no? Uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. I, you know, don't know specifics about the, the trainings that you're citing. Uh, the ones that I have been exposed to and been familiar with have really encouraged uh, uh, understanding people from all walks of life, you know, really creating an inclusive work environment. I especially think for the younger generation, that is what they're looking for, not only individuals who look like them, that there's a diverse uh, workforce, um, but that there is an understanding and value for um, the experiences that people have had. Let me let me ask you this: um, During your time as CEO at Northwest at Philanthropy Northwest, you've repeatedly invoked the work of Dr. Kendi, who has become famous for his theory of anti-racism. Mm -hmm. In a blog post that you wrote, you endorsed an article by Dr. Kendi where he claimed that Donald Trump's election in 2016 was an example of racist progress. Those are his words: racist progress. Do you agree with Dr. Kendi's claim that the election of the former president was racist progress? Uh, thank you, Sam, for that question. I have worked with um, Dr. Kendi. Uh, he's come to speak uh, at events where we have uh, uh, promoted greater conversation um, around issues of, of racial um, equity and equality. Um, I'm, I don't know specific to that statement, uh, but I, I, he's been... Uh, um, uh, within the philanthropic space, uh, uh, a thought leader around how to think about issues of achieving greater equity, uh, especially uh, in you know uh, communities of color. How can funders think about uh, how they you know how will they um, allocate their grant making, um, the type of partnerships that they pursue? So I think in in that respect, uh, he's tried to provide a uh, a perspective of of how to have you know. Um, a more nuanced understanding of where resources should go based on the historical experiences and history within this country of which communities have really had challenges along the way. But, but do you just, let me just ask you for your own view. I mean, you, you, you've cited, and, and as I said in a blog post, you wrote, endorsed the article in which he made this claim. But setting aside whatever his view may be, he's not here today. But, but your view, do you agree that the election of Donald Trump is an example of racist progress in this country? Uh, Senator Hawley, I thank you for that question. I have not made any of those type of, type of statements um, about the election. Uh, I've been in the philanthropic space uh, for the past few years. Um, and so, no, I can't speak to um, that particular position that Dr. Kendi has, has made. But, but I, I'm asking you if you agree with it. Because you wrote a blog post in which you endorsed the article. So I, I'm just asking you, I'm not asking you now about his view. I'm asking you, in your capacity, do you agree? Do you think that the election of Donald Trump is an example of racist progress in this country? Um, again, thank you, Senator. I have, uh, um, I do not recall this article that you are referring to, unfortunately. Um, but I, I would not make those type of statements, no. Um, do, you, do you think the United States is a is a systemically racist nation? Is that is that fair to say? 
Thank you, um, Senator Hawley. I, I appreciate these, these line of questions. I, I, I'm a big believer that, uh, um, and I'm sure this is a value we all hold, that we, we seek to um, ensure that everyone has equal opportunity in this country. I think, you know, I um, understand and appreciate also that the historical challenges that have um, many individuals have experienced based on their race or ethnicity. Um, and I think it's important that we have that understanding um, in addressing problems and inequities. Uh, and so having very tailored approaches, that's the work we did in the philanthropic space, was to understand the experience of indigenous peoples, um, especially in the Northwest. What are the type of solutions that our funders may want to you know, think about as far as supporting those communities and so on? I'm, I'm asking these questions because you're seeking to be confirmed to lead to what's effectively the federal government's HR department. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very important position, a very important agency. It impacts millions of, of federal employees, civil servants across the country. And I, I want to make sure that in this job that we are, and in this position, that we are committed to unifying Americans, not dividing them, certainly not dividing them along the lines of race. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we saw this past year uh, attributed to critical race theory um, and promoted by the federal government, including statements like uh, the nuclear family is an inherently white concept, uh, Christianity is an inherently white religion, uh, other statements about work ethic being a, a, a white concepts. These to me, frankly, seem insane and also racist. I mean, if they came out of the mouth of a white person, you would say, that is unbelievably racist. That kind of, and these were in, these were in trainings. Those, those that I'm just referencing were developed by the Smithsonian, but these were in training materials for uh, federal employees, for public officials. I think it's vital that we commit to not trying to divide Americans along lines of race. And so my, my question to you, my final question to you is, is that will you commit to uphold and protect our merit-based employment system and the core values that underpin that and not any effort to introduce considerations of political ideology, uh, 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 racial ideology, or anything other than, than the, the merit-based employment system and, and the laws that, uh, that define what, that, what those considerations and qualifications should be. Thank you, Senator. I do understand the role of this position. I, I very much take that very seriously and upholding merit system principles. Uh, I also understand the value of no one should be discriminated based on their race. I was a former civil rights lawyer, and I take that very seriously. I, I think we all uphold what Martin Luther King Jr. said, which is we should be judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. And that's the approach that I've taken. Very good. Um, I see I'm out of chair, uh, time, Mr. Chairman. I think we also have a vote call. I'll just say, I'll, I'll put this for the record. I, I want to make sure for um, the Board of Governors as a state with many, many rural communities, mm. I want to make sure, and I'll give this to you. We don't have time to, to have you answer, but I'll give it to you for the record. I want to make sure that uh, we protect rural delivery and rural post office. That is so important to my state. Millions of Missourians rely on that and others across the country. But I just want to get from you uh, your commitment. Again, uh, we'll do it for the record, uh, that uh, you will work to protect access and delivery services for rural Americans. So I'll give that to you in writing. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman.